Now with 20 horses, there are horses that will be farther back or even a little closer than we think, depending on racing luck. Kentucky Derby, for good or for bad, certainly racing luck plays a big part in the Derby. But we've identified four categories of horses. I think, uh, Matt, on my end, I expect a pace that's not crazy fast, but on the other hand, is fast enough to make it a very fair race, especially at a mile and a quarter. Would you agree with that assessment, sir? I would, Brian. I think maybe we're going to get a little bit of a faster pace than we've had the last couple years. Agreed. So let's start with the front runners, Matt. We've identified the five horses that we think are most likely to be up there on the lead. Now, we should say that there are certain horses who could be closer than than we project here and could be farther. There, there are certainly horses that we're not quite sure on, but this is our best guess as what might unfold early in the Kentucky Derby. And I'm going to start, Matt, the front runners list with the horse I think most likely to be on the lead, and that's Promises Fulfilled. Yeah, Promises Fulfilled, certainly. Uh, that's, that's what he's got to do. Um, to go to the lead, and uh, as as Brian was saying, I think the post position draw will be a factor in where horses end up. I'm not usually a big guy with post position, but in the Derby, you have to pay attention to it. Um, front runners are so important in in determining the way the race plays out. Since the year 2000, only one front runner. Only one horse has won the Derby gate to wire every step of the way, and that was War Emblem. Absolutely. It's tough to do. And if we're right, Promises Fulfilled is on the lead. We don't see another War Emblem scenario here. Now, there are going to be a lot of horses chasing this horse from the Dale Romans barn early. Among them, we see the most likely to be Bravazo, another long shot. Flame Away, the consistent horse from Marcassi barn. And then we have two of our big favorites, Matt, Justify from Bob Baffert and Mendelssohn, partly because of what he did in the UAE Derby, we think will be at least pressing this pace. That from what they've done in the past, it certainly seems that that's the way they're going. They're going to run. Um, the Derby is such a special thing, especially with these inexpe- inexperienced horses. A horse like Justify has never been in a big field like this, and 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 the energy and uh, that the horses get from running in the pack and the pace can have can turn a relaxed horse into a horse that gets into the bit and wants to compete. So um, that's one of the kind of big questions that Brian and I have about, uh, about justify it. The Kentucky Derby is not a relaxed scenario for horses. So it's going to be interesting to see how justify and how Mendelssohn uh, deal with that situation. Right. And, and, and being on or near the lead in the Kentucky Derby is not necessarily a bad thing by any means, because if you're there, it means that there has to be really good rallies coming from behind. But what Matt and I are both saying is there should be some speed in here, promises fulfilled, and then each other justify Mendelssohn, not to mention Flameway, Bravazo, and maybe a few others. We didn't even mention 170,000 screaming fans, Matt. So there's added pressure. There's added adrenaline. All of the above should be a test, should be a test for the big uh, big horses like Justify and Mendelssohn. And as we look at stalkers, we put Magnum Moon on the stalker list, Matt, uh, just because I think he might have shown the ability to sit off the lead a little bit more. But uh, he's another one of the favorites that could be very close to this early pace. So as we go into the stalker list, our second category, Magnum Moon tops it. Yeah, Brian, Magnum Moon is is an interesting horse because in the Arkansas Derby, um, Magnum Moon went out onto the lead. But that was a whole different situation where there was a soft pace. So uh, I also expect Magnum Moon to be running a little bit behind the pace setters in here. And this stalker group is really important to talk about, Brian, because the last four Kentucky Derby winners have all been uh, uh, horses that have come off the pace a little bit. And since the year 2000, uh, eight of the Derby winners have been stalkers. Yeah. And we have a pretty compact group here. Uh, While we think any of them are eligible to be a little closer than, than I guess it would be sixth early. Uh, they also could be a little farther back. Magnum Moon, you're right, Matt, has shown the ability to uh, 
uh, run a few different running styles. So we expect him to be a little bit off the lead. Now, Belindi is another horse who likes to be close to the lead, not on the lead. So we put him in the stalker list. Hasn't run since the Louisiana Derby, but certainly a talented horse. And then there's a couple others that were stalkers mid-pack. I think they might be a little closer here. Uh, Solomini, uh, the uh, enigmatic Solomini, and then Enticed, who, who's been in a consistent horse, has a stakes win at Churchill Downs for trainer Karen McLaughlin. Yeah, and, and that is an interesting group, and, and the way they run, I guess, is going to be determined by the, you know, what happens out of the starting gate. So uh, all this position stuff is such an important part of the way the Derby plays out. And then we have a very uh, interesting next group, Matt. It's a big group. We call it the mid-pack group. And and in the Derby, that means you could be as far back as 14th or something here. But these are horses who who like to make a little bit of rally, but they're not deep closers by any means. Uh, one horse on the list I should mention, we went back and forth a little bit, whether he was mid-pack or a real closer, and that's Hofberg. And he's so inexperienced, it might be too early to tell. But we have him in the mid-pack group, along with some of the big names. Again, Bolt Doro, Good Magic and Audible, horses we like for the Kentucky Derby, Matt. They want to be 10th and 12th early. Sounds like that's far back, but in the Derby, that's just middle of the pack, and they want to make their move on the turn. A lot of Kentucky Derbies have been won this way. They certainly have, and these are the kind of horses the jockeys at the beginning of the race are really simply going to be looking to get their horses out of the gate, find a nice, comfortable position, get their horses to relax, and that is such an important thing in the race because they're going 10 furlongs. None of them have ever gone 10 furlongs. It's a big question for all of them. So the riders that can get their horses to relax and start conserving a little energy while all these other horses that we mentioned are running hard on the bit and are competing and using up energy. Um, Mid-pack is a good place for to be in the Kentucky Derby. Mid-pack is a good place to be. Uh, a strong pace is a good thing for them. And racing luck in this big field, of course, plays a huge part. Other horses we have listed as the mid-pack bunch, Matt, include combatant, also free drop Billy, instilled regard, some of those 40 to one shots that could get into the super possibly, uh, as we talked about before. And then Forenzi fire a horse who wants to make a little rally, but we we worry about at 10 furlongs. So that list was deep, Matt. I'm going to go over them real quick again. Hofberg, we could have put him in the late runner group, but we have him in the mid pack. Then combatant, audible, good magic, free drop Billy, instilled regard, Forenzi fire, and Bolt Dora, all horses hoping to make that middle move and be right there as the field turns for home in the Kentucky Derby. And last but not least, Matt, we have the late runners. And it's tough to come from way back, way back in the Kentucky Derby. But if you get a good pace and a good trip, sometimes the Derby at 10 furlongs, just the sheer distance of this race, sets up for horses who can come from well back. We certainly don't think these will be 18, 19, and 20 early. But these are the horses we've identified as the most likely to be in the back third of the pack. And they include the horse I'm most interested in betting, Matt, and that's Vino Rosso. Yeah, and uh, it, it's not that this hasn't happened before. Um, you, we go back to uh, uh, 2013, and Orb was uh, was one of those horses who was uh, in in the in the back of the pack at the race, and it it turned out to be a contentious pace. It was an interesting race where the pace setters all uh, faded and ended up finishing towards the rear of the pack and the horses that were at the back of the pack relaxing were the ones that had the run at the end of the 10 furlongs and uh, hit the wire in front or uh, being one of them. Again, um, that overall field was not of the quality of this field. I don't really expect all of the horses that are at the front of this uh, Kentucky Derby to, to fade to the back. Um, I think and, and I'm sure Brian feels this way, too. Some of these horses are going to be competing at the end. Absolutely. And and we're, we're talking about the winning position here a lot because everybody wants to win the Kentucky Derby uh, uh, the connections and handicappers alike. But I think these horses offer real value underneath as well. So none of them will be among the single digit runners. 
but all three of them, we have Vino Rosso, My Boy Jack, and Lone Sailor, offer good value if you think they can get all the way up there to win the race. But also, these are horses that often, often hit the board. Derby winners don't often come from way back, but often you have horses hitting the board. Looking at Lee last year, for example, who have come from quite a way back. So think about that when you're filling out the bottom spots in your exotics. My boy Jack, the consistent rallier, and Lone Sailor, who ran a big race in the Louisiana Derby and seems to like Churchill Downs. Those are the three we have in the late runner slot now. Yeah, and uh, like you said, Brian, uh, the the trifectas and the superfectas uh, historically at in the Kentucky Derby have paid really big numbers. That's even with the favorite being in one of the other spots in first or second or third. Uh, you get one of those 30 to one shots in one of those spots and there's big money. 